This week, we're diving into the brand new ChatGPT agent. Let's go. Everything's about agentic AI these days, and the latest in that was the surprise release on July 17th of ChatGPT agent from OpenAI. Now, some of you might be thinking, hang on, didn't OpenAI already have some kind of AI agent thing? And yes, kind of. Back in January, OpenAI announced Operator, which was a simple agent that could use its own web browser to interact with websites and perform basic tasks for you. Now, Operator was only available for the $200 a month pro accounts and up, and even then it was very much a research preview early stage. But what they've just released is kind of the next stage of that idea, because this new ChatGPT agent combines both what OpenAI did with Operator and also the deep research feature of ChatGPT that can do deeper analysis, it can write reports, as well as a few other features too. Now, ChatGPT agent isn't available with a free ChatGPT account. You do have to have a paid account, but even the $20 one will work, although the more expensive ones, you can use it more. But even if you don't personally have access to ChatGPT agent right now, it's still worth understanding because all of the AI tools are moving in this direction. This is the way things are going, folks. So you might wonder, so what's the difference between regular ChatGPT and this new ChatGPT agent? Well, with the regular basic ChatGPT, you ask a question, you get a response. Even if the question you're asking has some complexity to it, it is pretty much one task at a time. Summarize these notes, generate that image, explain what a REST API is as if I'm five years old. But when we have any kind of agentic AI, like ChatGPT agent, you can think a little bigger. You can focus on a larger goal, not just a single task. And agentic AI is always about being able to take action, not just responding with some text. You can ask it to actually go do things for you. Like what, you ask? Well, it can browse websites and interact with them. It can create spreadsheets and create presentations. It can download files and analyze them. It could check your email. It could update your calendar. It is connected to the different parts of your world. It's not just trapped in the chat window. So here's an example. If I'm in normal, regular, non-agent chat GPT, I could begin by typing something like, how do I or how would I? And I'll get some suggestions. These are kind of classic chat GPT prompts. I could ask it to suggest a recipe or to explain a technical topic in different ways. If I now switch to the new agent mode, and I can either select that here or I can type forward slash agent. Now, I also see more examples of prompts, but these are a little different. These are more agentic prompts, meaning they are goal-oriented and they're action-oriented. We have things like book a Kyoto boutique hotel on bookings.com with an on-site onsen. But notice, this prompt is not how do I book a Kyoto boutique hotel or even recommend me a Kyoto boutique hotel. No, it's actually go book it. Or over in reports, we have things like research energy investment themes on barons.com. In spreadsheets, we have things like build a discounted cash flow model for NVIDIA. We could get it to generate a presentation like creating a go-to market strategy for robotic pet launch. But again, none of these are help me understand how to or give me a plan to do this. No, it's go do it because the agent can take action. And I'll notice these examples have a play button beside them. You can actually show the result of running this particular prompt. Now, this is kind of like having an instant replay in a sports game. It's not actually going to redo this, but if you press that play button, it will show you what happened when somebody else did this. But it's actually a really good way to quickly get an idea of what ChatGPT agent can do and how it does it. So I'm going to try this one to build a discounted cash flow model for NVIDIA. And okay, discounted cash flow model, this might sound like MBA jargon, but even if this isn't something you would personally ever need to do, look at this as an idea of creating a complex spreadsheet that needs to collect significant amounts of data between multiple documents all over the web. It's not a trivial task. 
So I'm going to give it this pretty complex goal-oriented prompt, and then we start to see what ChatGPT Agent does. ChatGPT Agent has is access to its own virtual computer. When you give it a goal, it will boot up that virtual computer, and it will use it to accomplish all the different tasks it needs to do to get to that goal. It's kind of like having an intern sitting beside you. You give them a goal, they open up their laptop. You could actually watch them use their web browser. You could watch them use the terminal window. Same thing here. You can watch ChatGPT Agent do everything it's doing. What I'm seeing here is ChatGPT Agent using its own web browser to search publicly available documents and PDFs. It's going to annotate what it's doing as it's going through it step by step. It's trying different websites. It's going to the SEC filings. It's pulling information and remembering that information. If it hits a dead end, it will back up and try something different. It ends up opening a terminal window and starting making calculations. Now, because this is kind of a replay, I have this bar at the bottom. I can actually scroll through it. I can go all the way to the end and see that this entire process took 15 minutes. And it explains everything it did along the way. And it ends up by creating a spreadsheet and giving me that download of this discounted cash flow for NVIDIA. Now, again, even if this goal isn't something you would ever personally do, hopefully what you saw is this idea of being able to give the agent a complex multi-step goal and let it go figure out how to accomplish that goal. In this case, researching across multiple external sites, making calculations, creating spreadsheets, and even an explanation of those spreadsheets. But if you think of this much less like a basic AI chatbot, and more like that idea of delegating to an assistant, both the benefits and the challenges of that. Now, a few things to know. First, it can be slow. We're talking 15, 20 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes for complex tasks. This isn't for quick questions. It's more of a, okay, give it a go, and then go and get a cup of coffee while it works on it. Second, you're always in control. If you ask it to do something more complex, that might include making a purchase or booking a flight or sending an email, it will ask permission before actually doing those actions. And you can interrupt at any time. You can take over the browser and just stop it. And third, AI hallucinates. So would I have taken that spreadsheet or any document or presentation it gave me and just feel comfortable just passing along to somebody else? Absolutely not you need to check any results first. A quick sidebar. If you have a personal account with ChatGPT or any of the other AI chatbots, you already know not to take confidential or corporate data and use it in a personal AI chat. Now, if you're thinking, yeah, 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 I'm sure that rule applies here too. Actually, no, it's different. It is much more important here because whatever information you give this agent, it's going to spin up its own virtual computer and go and do stuff with that information. It's going to search the web. It's going to connect to other systems and tools. So your control decreases and the risk profile increases. It doesn't mean this isn't useful. That example I showed was a good business use case because it was working with publicly available data. I didn't need to give the agent anything confidential. And sure, OpenAI and everybody else are working on improving the guardrails around agents to try and minimize the risk. But it's going to be kind of a moving target for a while. Just think about how this works, and you can recognize you need to be very careful about what kind of information you give it. And sidebar. And I will say, it's still kind of clunky. It sometimes chooses an approach that just doesn't make sense. The presentations it generates aren't great, but we've seen how fast AI has moved in other areas. And every major AI company is racing towards agents because we're moving from AI that answers questions to AI that does things. And if there's one thing you can do to be ahead of the curve on this, it's starting to think about those kind of higher level prompts, thinking about goals, not individual tasks. Because whether it's for ChatGPT agent itself or whatever other agentic system you may end up using a year from now, being able to think like a manager, not just a user, being able to direct AI well is going to be a more and more valuable skill. See you next time.